and welcome to another episode of Ubar. Today, let's talk about event-driven applications and how you can centralize all the events in one place. And now you might be wondering why I want to do that. Well, I think uh, one of the biggest issues we're working with event-driven applications is diagnosing an issue, debugging, figuring out what is there. Um, I show you in a previous episode um, how you can design this event-driven application so you have a good documentation on how your application um, is. So you don't need to like uh, <laughs> test it every time to know what is going on. But sometimes there are issues and the documentation is not enough for us to figure out where uh, the errors are. Finding issues in event-driven applications can be challenging as there are multiple microservices all talking to each other, all talking in parallel or in multiple ways. And if you don't see what you should see, it's quite hard sometimes you know, to go and, and pinpoint uh, the error in the right place because, well, you might need to go and iterate around your system to figure out where things go wrong. So that's why having a centralized place where all like your events are recorded, it's great. Um, EventBridge comes with a functionality that allows you to do that. Today, I want to show you a super simple way on how you can basically write all your events to CloudWatch or put them in a DynamoDB table and or <laughs> because we are going to do both. So then if you have a problem, you can go and see the logs, you can go and see the table and try to pinpoint where the error happened. If you don't have a clue what a band bridge is and all the things, I have a playlist where I talk a lot about a band bridge. You should go and check it out and then maybe this video will help you. Um, but today it's going to be a lot about the band bridge. And uh, for this demo, I will be showing you an app that um, we designed and built in a design video that is also linked in the description box. So if you're interested to know how uh, the application that I'm showing you came to be, you can go and check that video. Uh, but today we are going to focus on the central login, on recording everything in CloudWatch, uh, on recording everything in Dynamo and how you can interact with it. So before jumping to the demo, if you have not liked, subscribe, and all those things that YouTube like, bad, bad, bad person. Uh, <laughs> I'm just joking. But yes, please do it. Uh, that helps me always a lot. So what I'm going to show you today, we can achieve it because of two reasons. The first one is the power of event-driven applications because they are so decoupled that it's very easy to do what we are going to do with really changing your application at all. And the second thing that uh, it's very powerful is the capability of a band bridge to have different types of buses. So let's start there and then let's go to the other place. If you're wondering what are types of buses, that's a great question. So a band bridge has uh, different types of buses. The basic one, that is the default one, that is where all the AWS um, services uh, will send the messages. So buses are like these pipelines that receive events. So the events will flow and each of these buses are independent from others. So it's just a big pipeline. And the default one is where all the AWS services are sending their data. Then we have custom event buses. And here you can create um, for your application, different custom buses. And there your applications can be sending messages, events, and nobody can see them. They are inside this pipeline. And these custom event um, buses can be hooked into multiple regions, into multiple accounts. So if you want to see how to do that, that's a great thing. You can let me know in the comments because that's something I can show you. And then finally, we have the partner event buses. And these are uh, buses where our partners will be sending information to event reach. So there's a lot of SaaS uh, vendors that are hooked directly into a band bridge and will send the messages using those partner buses. But that's something that is not for this video. In this demo, we are going to do a custom bus and the, the events that are inside uh, that custom bus are the ones that our application is uh, sending and is triggering different microservices uh, using that in those events. 
So we can look at the um, template YAML in our code. The code is uh, in the um, GitHub repo as always. And you can see there in the top, there is the event bus. And this is how you define a custom event bus. In some, in CloudFormation, it's super simple. You just say that you want a custom event bus. <laughs> and in our case, I'm giving a name to it because it makes life easier. So uh, the name is the app event bus and then uh, the stack name. So basically, whatever is your stack name, then you will have uh, this event bus. This is good because you can deploy this many times. So now uh, our events are flowing inside this pipeline. And what I said about that we can achieve this central login because of the power of uh, event-driven application, the power of decoupling, that means that we can just basically create a new Lambda function that is listening to all the events that are emitted inside this pipeline, inside this event bus, and gets triggered this Lambda function whenever there is an event in the bus. And then when the Lambda function gets triggered, we can do whatever we want. We can uh, write to CloudWatch, we can put something in Dynamo, we can even create metrics. I don't know, whatever you want. I will show you Dynamo and I will show you CloudWatch, but feel free to <laughs> add more things. So the only thing we need to do is to create a new Lambda function. So that's the only thing we need to do, well, besides creating the bus on the table that we are going to store things, but uh, we don't need to touch the application itself. So basically you can start doing this without really impacting your existing application. So this is the power of event-driven applications. I mentioned it in the previous video about the extensibility. Uh, and if you want to have a better understanding what are event-driven applications, I can do a video on that. Let me know, it will be more theoretical, but it might help you. So uh, we have this Lambda function. It's a normal Lambda function, Node.js and well, whatever, and it has permissions to, um, to write in a table. I will be using Particle. Uh, if you don't know what is Particle, it's a way to use SQL queries into Dynamo. If you're interested in that, you know what to do. I'm teasing a lot of things in this video, <laughs> but, but I'm exploring a lot of things that you might be interested in as well. So just let me know. And uh, I'm giving permissions to do operations in that database. Then uh, the interesting part here is the event source. And this is our event, um, event bridge uh, custom bus. So here we have one rule that is the one that is going to trigger. So in this Lambda function, we are defining the event bridge rule at the same time that we are defining the trigger. That's something we can do with AWS SAM. There is the video in the event bridge uh, series on how to do this, but basically this is the rule and it's also the <laughs> event source at the same time. And this is triggering um, basically with all the events that are inside the bus that we just created. This is super simple and uh, basically it will trigger all the time. And then we have one that letter Q configure and that if there is an error in processing the event, then it will get um, into uh, this dead letter Q. If you want to know about dead letter Qs, I have a video on that uh, in the playlist of EventBridge, so check it out. So, well, that's uh, the function itself, the infrastructure of the function. So I mentioned that there was a Dynamo table as well, so we can look at the table and see how it's structured. So this table is something that I just put like this. You can do it better for your use case, better for what you need. Basically, this is just um, a dump of the event in Dynamo and it has like um, three parts, the who, which customer ID is doing this operation. That's our kind of um, key combined with the uh, time what. So together with those are forming the, the Dynamo DB key. And the time what is like the timestamp and the event type. So then that's unique. And then we know which customer as well has done the operation. And then we have the event um, detail that basically it's a dump of the, of the event. And then we have the event source that is the, um, the microservice that triggered that event. So it's very, very simple. And you can see uh, the definition of that table as well in the uh, infrastructure file in the template YAML, where we will have a table that um, has this composite key with the who and the time what, and then uh, one is um, how the key is structured. That's kind of it. 
So now we can move into the uh, handler.js and we can see the code. And in the code, you will see that the first thing that we are doing is writing the event into CloudWatch. We are not doing anything fancy for that. We are just putting it in CloudWatch and then we are writing it into Dynamo. Here you could add CloudWatch metrics if you want. You can uh, do more complex things, but for, for my example, just dumping it in CloudWatch works very well. Why? Because usually how I do this, I have um, my development things here, and then I try things, and then I have the CloudWatch log uh, group appending all the time. So when there is an error or there is something, I can see those messages appearing and I know everything is good. So it helps in the development process and also it's uh, easier sometimes if all the events of one uh, customers are grouped together, it, it helps when you're developing. But if the customer, like if this is a live session, <laughs> then your logs might be all mixed up because well, uh, multiple customers, multiple uh, things might be happening in, in at the same time. So then this will not be very linear. So here you could uh, you can use the DynamoDB table. So in the table, you can do more filtering and you can see for a particular, um, in this case, it, uh, we can filter by the order ID, the customer ID and things like that. So um, we can do that. So. In the store event is where we are going to, to save that um, row into Dynamo. And here I'm basically creating that, like the, the who, the time, the what, that's kind of what uh, is the, the, the event detail, like the, the operation, like the order was created, the payment was successful and so on. And then finally the dump of the event into the, into the, the log. And then we put that into the database. So this is um, how we are storing it in Dynamo. So if you are very confused, don't worry, because I will show you all this and how it looks so you, you understand better what I'm doing. So uh, you can download the code, you can deploy this. Uh, you might need to follow the instructions in the readme. So you have some data in your database. So if you want to trigger uh, these operations, I will be triggering using the uh, Thunder client. I have my link uh, with all my Visual Studio Code extensions, so don't ask about them. They're all in, in, in a video now. And, and for that, I have the API Gateway uh, URL that is triggering all this event flow. Um, so basically, this is triggering an order of a product, and we can order, one customer can order one product, and this is already deployed. I have the API Gateway URL when I deploy it, and I send this, and this starts the whole event-driven application. So multiple microservices get all um, in bulk and do their own thing. And then at the same time, uh, I can check the logs for uh, my event store function. So uh, I need to refresh this. This is the serverless console plugin uh, extension. And you can see here that uh, the CloudWatch, we can see the logs and you can see how the logs are appearing, the order created, and you can see the order ID is the same. So this is the log for this uh, particular uh, order and then we can see that uh, the event is getting bigger and bigger because things are happening in uh, in here and now we get the information about the event the item if it's available or not we also uh, start getting the, the information of the, the item the price the image and things like that that we might need to the payment and you can see that step by step um, we are getting all the information uh, that is in the event, we get it dumped in the CloudWatch and, and we can uh, see what is going on. So this is great to have it as, as an append while you are de developing and if you are doing something, you can see that things are working and this, this just helps out in the development process. So you can uh, go through all the logs and you will see one log per uh, event that goes inside the, the bus. And in this case, I only have one operation. So basically that will trigger multiple microservices and send multiple events, but yeah. So then we can look at the database and the database as well, we can see it uh, in, the, uh, in the serverless console. I can, I can show you the Dynamo table. So here we have the four columns that I showed you before, the customer, 
uh, the time what, that is the time uh, that the operation was done, the event detail, that is the dump of the um, uh, event that it's been sent, and the event source, that is the microservice that produced that event. You can open each of these rows in a JSON format inside Visual Studio Code, that, um, that's something you can do, or you can see all this in the console as well, in the AWS console, or using the uh, AWS CLI, how you prefer. So here you can see all the events, they are getting bigger and bigger as we move forward. And um, now imagine that you have multiple orders happening at the same time, and you have one order that you might want to know if there is a problem or something. So how you start uh, using this table is very easy. You go to the event detail, for example, if you have the order, um, order ID that you get um, when you create the order, and then you can uh, search in there like a contains and then you search and then you start getting that um, that order so this is very easy you can even add the order id to the composite key so um, it's kind of faster uh, the queries but in this case it works um, it works quite well so this is uh, one way of doing it so that was the video for me today. I hope this helped you to uh, get a picture on like your event-driven architectures, how to uh, solve this problem of herding cats when you have multiple microservices doing a million things at the same time, and you don't have a visibility of what is going on. With this approach, you will have a full visibility of what is going on, a more clear idea, and um, yeah, so I hope this helped you. And i see you next week with another episode of FUBA. Ciao, ciao!